I'll just say a few words uh, about this phrase, the state of things, uh, and then I'll introduce our speaker, Jacques Rancière. Um, we, we chose this, this title, um, the state of things, for on the, on the one hand, uh, because of the openness and urgency uh, which it in some ways conveys, but also really because of the combination uh, of that association with a kind of uh, metaphysical, political pathos or a kind of uh, foreboding of some sort, which in a way uh, seems currently to uh, accompany uh, the urgency of the address to the kind of world historical events, which some of which will be discussed uh, in this series. Uh, insofar as you, you don't really dwell on the um, state of things if the state of things are too good. So there's a, uh, there's a, there's a slightly dark backdrop in some ways, I think, to the um, analyses of uh, world historical conjunctures in a way that we've invited our, uh, our speakers to address. As Marta said, we're, um, the program is off offering a kind of conjunctural contextualization or a kind of broader movement of intellectual reflection and criticism as a background to the, uh, to the Biennale's uh, traditional showcasing of recent art uh, in the belief that it remains essential uh, to contemporary art that it not only be accompanied by, but that it be forced into relation with various forms of, of non-art. Uh, it's not just that because art since the 60s has changed its fundamental character, that it needs a far greater forms of discursive support to render itself more generally culturally intelligible, to have broader cultural effects. It's also because Oddly, uh, and at least in historical terms, it seems odd that in the last decade, uh, critical art seems to have once again come to depend upon entering into a certain relationship with politics. Uh, and it's, uh, if you like, the political dimensions of these broader contextualizations that we're uh, proposing, if you like, as a context also through which to view the Biennale. Uh, I emphasize the word reflection and criticism here, uh, partly to emphasize the philosophical dimension of our program, which will be represented in particular by Jacques Rancière uh, tonight, but also because, of course, it's still criticism that remains the main discursive link between other intellectual activities uh, and art practice. So given this, uh, this trajectory which we chose, uh, it was in a way, it was almost inevitable in a way that we would um, turn to Jacques Rancière as our first choice to open the series since uh, over the last decade, his work has really been at the center of uh, European philosophy and art theory alike. And in a way, in, during the last decade, he's been the European philosopher whose work has had most uh, effect, I think, uh, on general cultural and specifically artistic discourses. I say philosophy, uh, but also uh, there, is always, there is always something more than, than philosophy in Jacques Rancière's work. Um, and when there's always something more than philosophy in a philosophical discourse, it means there's always also something against philosophy. Uh, Rancière's work likes to play philosophy against its traditional 19th century antagonist sociology, uh, but he also likes to play on the side of history in these 19th century disciplinary disputes against philosophy. And of course, he likes to play politics against them all. But while he's playing politics against them all, he's also operating with a conception of politics which uh, is admittedly, uh, at least in part, aesthetic in its definition of the uh, function of the political act. So there are a series of movements uh, across uh, Jacques Rancière's work between philosophy, history, politics, art, that if you like, that circle uh, and circulate through these discourses. Uh, and it's because of that 
but I think he's the most appropriate person to uh, uh, launch this, this series of talks. In particular, his title, the title of his talk today, In What Time Do We Live?, uh, in many ways, re-asks uh, the question of the philosophical discourse of modernity, which is in its, we might say, its French Foucauldian variant, uh, which has been asked uh, repeatedly for the last 20 or 30 years and that remains, in some sense, a sore point of all cultural discourse. Um, time, uh, the particular, the question of the present time, has always been uh, something for which philosophy felt historically responsible, but to which it has always had, in some ways, problems addressing. So uh, I'm extremely pleased that, um, that Jack has chosen this as his topic tonight. 